G'day, Michael here. I've got this printhead exactly where I want it, and so I'm ready to share it on um, uh, Thingiverse. And what I've done is I've done a test hexagon, which is the best sort of test that I've come across for testing the uh, delta design. Um, now, this I've shown in a previous video, um, the various attributes, but basically, of course, you've got your typical, the three axes, um, and you need to have, of course, cooling fans, which I've shown in a previous video how they all assemble, but you'll see the machine shortly anyway. And these outlet ducts, I'm gonna call them, but I suppose almost like jets, really, nozzles. Um, in any case, the thing is working absolutely brilliantly. Um, what I've done is clear span the infill. I'll just go to slicer. So let's have a look at uh, the preview. And what I've done is I've just made it like a hollow, unsupported span, and then I've got the, the bridging and the infill. Now what I found was the very first layer works quite well. And I reckon it'd take about six layers for that span to come good. I've only printed the four, but you'll see anyway, the first layer go down and the rest is a matter of tweaking. I think I'll be able to improve that yet. I also need to insulate the actual um, volcano um, hot end a little bit better because uh, it drops temperature down significantly. Uh, instead of sitting at my 210 degrees, it's uh, running at around about 180. In any case, um, that's the task at hand and it's quite a reasonably good torture test. You can see that um, clear span. The diagonal, well, let me just, can I do that better? As you can see, the axes, I'll just go down so it's the first layer if I can. Layer. There we go. Oop. Okay, the axes there you can see are not square across, so that length across there I measured uh, as 113 millimeters of span. So it is asking quite a bit over that span, and doing a consecutive uh, print basically um, it's not quite enough bonding between each track that they actually just basically end up being sort of independent strings going across the span. So maybe there's something I can do with the slicer settings to improve that. Because if I can get them to bond to each other a little bit better, then uh, I think the um, infill will be better. But in any case, let's talking and let's let's get on to the actual um, uh, the, the test piece. Oh, actually, maybe perhaps before I do that, just when we get on onto the when you install this unit, you need to go to your relevant Arduino um, Marlin file. There's a, there's a couple of things to watch out for. Let's just go to the top. Where are we now? Oh, here we go. Now you've got the um, the diagonal rod, which is you know the linkage rods. Um, then you've got the smooth rod offset. Now that is basically the pillar distance to the surface of the pillar from the centre of the print uh, head. Now this effector offset is basically how far the knuckle is in effect from the center of the, well, the print nozzle you could say. Um, so the design I've got is actually designed around 25 millimeters offset so you'd have to make that adjustment if yours that you're replacing is any different. This carriage offset denotes the distance from the vertical pillars you know the three axes. Um, mine is normally 18.6 uh, the ones that came with it were actually uh, 22, so I've, my design's a little bit different. I've got those other designs up on Thingiverse. Actually, I might show you on the, the 3D CAD. And, uh, that's these components, and this design, one part bolts to the other. I've done it like this so they print well enough without having to do any other supports. Now, you can see this design here. I've got the option of having either um, four wheels or three. Four are a lot more stable and don't tend to rock around anywhere near as much as the three. And you can see I've got this gap here to allow you to tension the rollers onto those vertical pillars. Okay, so we'll go back to the, the printhead. Okay, now you should not have to ream out any holes here. Uh, to assemble it all, I've actually just used 3.5 millimeter wood screws to put all the parts on. 
Um, the centrifugal fans on the side are a little bit tricky. As you can see, the holes in this area here, they just overlap each other. Um, so what I've done is I've chosen to do, do bottom left, top right on every axis, and that way the screws miss each other. So that seems to work well enough. It doesn't really require much to hold the, the fans in place. You can see the bore is clear even down to these um, uh, the ducts to allow you to, uh, to insert the, you know, the, the cooling part of the, the hot end into the assembly. Basically it's not quite a symmetrical part. This side's got a flat face here. The rear doesn't. It's sort of circular. It's a bit of curve there. Um, but basically whatever orientation you choose to put in the machine that's cool. Care has to be taken when you do the wiring for everything that it's not going to get tangled up in the buckles, uh, the knuckles and so forth. So that's the only thing you really got to watch out for. I don't think of any other alerts that really matter. Okay, so going back to our um, Arduino rig, these offsets you might have to tweak. Um, and the other thing you need to do probably now I don't, I don't use on this machine. I don't use um, auto bed leveling. What is it now? find it. That's a Z uh, home position. Home direction. Must be getting close. Any time now. Where are you? There we go. Manual Z home position. Uh, when I originally got the machine it was 306 but I've changed a lot in that design. Um, yeah so now I'm down to 240 but in any case you've got to make this a small enough number so when it like the print head the print head assembly the whole all axes go to the top they hit uh, limit switches, find their home position, and then they come back down. You may have to simply measure the head you've got, and if this design ends up being, let's say, I don't know, 15 millimeters longer than the one you've got, you'd have to subtract 15 millimeters from whatever yours is set for there. Now I've set mine so it's about four millimeters clear of the bed, and so I've tweaked slicer. Let's go into print settings, print to settings, I should say. Set offset. Oh, yeah, minus one. Okay, so it stops five mil clear by nature um, from that magic number, and then I've had to go minus one, so it'll go. It's five millimeters plus a further one millimeter, so six millimeters clear is where the thing parks after homing. In any case, you'll have to keep an eye on that detail. Make it so it homes well above the plate, and then tweak this Z offset in your printer settings on us on your slicer to compensate for how much extra you might have to go up or down. Alright, well I think that's about it. I, I guess we'd have to move on to uh, the actual test. Right, so I've done a, a couple of tweaks on the first one and that is I've bumped up the temperature of 10 degrees because as soon as the fans kick in it appears that the well it looks to me like the filaments are a bit cool. Um, and the other thing I've done is I've increased the overlap of infill to 55%, which is actually slices default. Um, I've also, oh yeah, I've also halved the height of the actual uh, test piece, so as to just not not produce such tall walls because it's just a waste of time. Okay, so it's just about done the first layer. You can see it squishing down pretty well. pressure on the bowden feeder. Okay, we're on the next layer and we're away. Now I'm just printing with PLA so it's a fairly um, easy process. test hexagon is you have flats that are 100 millimeters apart in line with either axes because you've got three pillars and of course you've got three in effect axes on the um, 
the hexagon. The two flats going from bottom right to top left line up with the right pillow. The ones going from bottom left to top right uh, line up with the left pillow. And the, the bottom to the, the top uh, it lines up with the rear pillow. So if there's one uh, axis that stands out as an odd measurement, then there'll be an error in how the um, the mathematics work out. So going back into the Arduino, you can see what you should be getting, and you may have to shim up one of the you know the bearing assemblies, linear bearing assemblies on that axis, or maybe shim up the other two, or however it's going to do. But in any case, it'll give you a hint as to what you're looking for in the way of errors. Add it for three minutes. Now you can hear the bit cooling is spun up, blowing pretty hard. That's even making a better attachment to the edges. With previous with previous prints, the um, Yeah, I haven't been getting an attachment to the, the wall, so that 55% overlap on the print seems to be a lot better. I'll just zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. Now what I'm talking about is this area here, where you've got, where you've got the actual infill part making contact with the wall. That seems to have attached better. Excellent bridging. I'll just uh, zoom back out again a little bit for you. There we go. And that's probably, as soon as it gets out to the open, it's probably about 110, maybe 115 millimetres span. I still only guessed it, I haven't actually measured it. So the accurate measurement is 113 millimetres that it's standing at that angle. Well, as you can see with that uh, test print, the spanning is actually quite good. So the um, printed cooling is working rather well. I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah, I hope uh, this video has been of interest to you. And if you do end up uh, printing this unit and installing it on your printer, uh, yeah, feel free to let me know how things go. Well, feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. 
bye for now.